Welcome to Don's Key Tech. In this video, we're going to show how we can use the Raspberry Pi as an object counter by using the infrared IR sensor. IR sensors are excellent electronic components that can sense the proximity of objects and we will use it in counting objects that are passing through in our mini conveyor system. So, let's discuss the design of our project. So, I have here my Raspberry Pi and my mini conveyor system wherein I attach the infrared sensors and the browser from my mobile phone where I access the web application that is created inside my Raspberry Pi. So, the Raspberry Pi contains the PLAS and the PLAS socket I.O. which houses our object counter web application. And it includes also our web socket server. It connects also with our infrared sensors, which also which checks for any passing load in our conveyor. So for example, when the IR sensor detects that a load is passing through, then it signals the Raspberry Pi device. The Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi device then increments its own counter and sends a web socket message to all connected clients. So when we access the web application on our web on our mobile phone, then it opens a web socket con client connection to our Plus web socket server. It will then listen for any incoming message that our web sockets updates it, its own counter. So that's how is the design process of how we will create our project. Regarding the, the tech stacks or the technology stack that we're going to use in our Raspberry Pi, we'll be using PLAS and PLAS socket I.O. in creating our object counter web application. I have covered exact this extensively in my uh, display real-time updates using Python, PLAS, and WebSocket video, which I will post also in the description of this video so that you can read it first because uh, what what I did in this project is very similar to that project so it's a good idea to understand how it works. We will use Python for the programming, some JavaScript for handling the WebSocket messages, and the main CSS for some styling. So as you can see in here, the Raspberry Pi is sending WebSocket messages into our browser in our mobile phone so that it will increase the count, the count of our counter. For the wiring and the schematic layout, it's actually just easy. So we just connect the BCC of the Raspberry Pi to the BCC of the infrared sensor, the ground is to ground, and the GPIO 23 to the output pin of our IR sensor. And that's all for the wiring schematic layout. So let's go now and take a look uh, regarding the code of our application. So the steps on how to set up this application is in the companion link of this project, which is in the description of this video. So you can check it out on how you can uh, create the necessary setup so that you can run the application in your uh, Raspberry Pi. So when you run your application in, Ras in your Raspberry Pi, uh, you'll just see several files that you can check out. The, but the important uh, file is in this con conveyor counter app.py. This is where the counter web application, the object counter web application is, and it contains also the web socket server. So basically, uh, the discussion regarding this conveyor counter is discussed in the earlier video that I did. So you can take a look at that one. If you want to learn more regarding PLAS, PLAS and PLAS socket IO, because those are the technology that, or the library that I have used in creating this project. But let's run through uh, the program so that you would know also how it works. Uh, in the project, you will see that there's just this PLAS application called decorators. So these decorators are the PLAS and the PLAS socket IO decorators. 
it renders the index.html for our root path. And for the other path, for the socket IO, which is the connect. So when the first, app, first client connects, then it runs a global thread. So this global thread runs in the background. And we'll discuss more regarding this background thread later. And there is a disconnect also. So the decorator for the disconnect is when, when the client disconnects, then it just prints that the client has disconnected. And the socket IO that ran up, which is how we run our application. Regarding the background thread that I have mentioned earlier, uh, this is the function that is being run by the background thread. And what it is doing is that it just regularly checks the value of our infrared sensors. If the infrared sensor registers a low, it means that it has detected that a load is incoming. So it sets the variable is load detected into true. Otherwise, it will set into false. So the good thing that I, I have added here is that if the, if the IR sensor detects that there is a uh, load incoming, then the value will always be low. So what I did was when I added an event in here, in the uh, that detects if the value has changed, and in the GPIO, once the value has changed, then it calls a callback called the check event. So in the check event, as you can see, the check event will check if the load has been triggered. If the load has been triggered, then it means that uh the, the the proximity sensor or our ir sensor detected something so it sends that uh there's it should be sending a counter event to our web socket clients in this case we increment our count variables and, and upon incrementing we send it with the socket that emit type io that emit which the name of the, the the event is update sensor data and it could it contains also the get current date time. Uh, the important thing in here is that in the app.js, as you can see, there is the socket that on and it presents to the, the same update sensor data also. And when it receives that there is an, a socket message incoming from the web socket server, it logs the the values and then what it did using jQuery, I just changed the value of the uh, header tag and show the current count of our web socket uh, object counter. So if you would take a look at the index.html, there is a, there is an h1 here which represents the count of our uh, object counter and it will just increment the value in here. So from zero it becomes one, two, three, whenever we receive a web socket message. The app.css is just used for styling and I just use the min CSS in the uh, styling of our uh, web page so that it will look good when, uh, when we access it in our mobile phone. And that's all about the, the code of our application. If you have any questions or any comments, then please leave a comment in the, under this video so that I can get back to you. And that's all for, for this project. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!